Adam knew what he wanted. In Genesis 2, 19, God began to bring different kinds of creatures to him. See what he said. How could he say that if he did not have a desire? And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was no found a help meet for him. I can sit in the midst of a crowd of women. If what I desire is not there, I will not find anything. It's not the number of people around you. If you're a purpose-driven person. If you are not, every woman is attractive. If you have a speck, you are not moved until the speck arrives. You should be a man of desires. So there was none for you. And guess what? As long as you desire and yet have not found, the one that keeps bringing will keep bringing until you find. Have that in your head. God has never changed. He will not change for you. He is still in the business of bringing things to fulfill your desire. If you have partnership with him, oh, if you have partnership with him, if you don't have partnership with him, somebody else will be bringing. Did you hear what I just said? Okay, let's look at um, Genesis chapter 24 and prove to you that Somebody somewhere had a desire. I'm going to tear some things from your head. Tear off some mediocrity. You must learn to desire some things from the Lord and get it. Now, Abraham wanted a wife for his son Isaac. So he called his servant and told him to swear. And what was he swearing concerning? Go to verse verse 1. And Abraham was old and was stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Yes? And Abraham said unto his elder servants of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. Yes? And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Yes? But thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. First expression of his desire when it comes to to choosing a wife for the son. So, this is all about Abraham's desire. Because God had given him a covenant and there was need because the covenant also was a covenant that will run from generation to generation. So, there was a need for him to help in the choice that the son makes. The choice of a wife that will preserve the covenant. So he said, go to my people. Because where he was, according to the covenant, God had promised to do what? To disinherit them. Because of their sinful nature. For you as a believer, your family talks about the house of God. Much more, it talks about Families that share same value system. Huh? Huh? There are families. Oh. There are families. They go to church. They are wicked. You come into a family, there's wickedness. They are fighting themselves. You come in, that is going to be your family for the rest of your life. Guess what? Give it time. Two years. You have joined parties. Fighting, though a believer. Your family can model you. It can mold you in a pattern that you'll be wondering if care is not taken. Am I communicating? 
there are families that are welcoming. They think of investing in whoever comes into that family. <gasps> that kind of family, that's the kind of family to belong. So, in your choice, you have to have an idea of the value system of the family you are going to get somebody from. Are they the type that always criticize where they so finish you, so finish you that you will lose value in yourself and in what you believe in? Are there are families like that. If you are not a medical doctor in that family, you are useless. Are you, are you aware of what I'm talking about? Yes, there are families. What is in their DNA is <laughs> robbery. They are thieves. Guess what? You now come in and you have the money. Oh my God. You're a gunner. <laughs> uncle? Uncle? Hey. Um, school fees. Like a, a drama I watched once. A son, whenever he calls his dad over textbook, they'll give him a particular book, you know, geography to buy. He said, Dad, I'm to buy three books. But I said, What are their names? Jojo, <laughs> Gragra, <laughs> Fee, book three. The dad will give him money for three. He will buy one. <laughs> because the father was an idiot. So they will, if mama did not collapse and she's on her way to the hospital, it will be something. They will collect everything. Skin you alive. So he was talking about taking this. Let this man go to people of my kind. I don't know whether I'm making sense here. Yes, Writing books, you know, mother-in-law, father-in-law are a problem in relationship. My mother-in-law, my father-in-law are not a problem to mine. Why did you go to that kind of mother? <laughs> Who carried you there? You made the choice. You made the choice. My own mother is not a problem to my wife. They are good friends. She travels to come and see me. Ministry takes me away. She's okay. At times extends her stay. Because she met my wife. I come back and I'm talking to them. I'm, I have to beg my wife to please release my mother to me. Let me spend some time with her. This is my mama. <laughs> I go over to her dad's place. And I am, and her dad starts gisting. We gist. And she hangs around because... She told me that when her father gists with me, her father tells me things he has never told them about his life. So they enjoy him more when I'm around. <laughs> that's, that's what we're talking about. Because of the same value system. Same value system. My younger sister was wedding. Her dad traveled all the way to Abuja. To be there in the wedding. Ha, ha, ha. Same value system. So a woman of my kind. A family that has value for human lives. Value and respect for people. Love and regard for people. Look for that family as well. Don't have the impression, ah, okay, it's the man I know. It's the woman I know. It's the I have a good man, and at the end of the day, family interference can mess up the relationship. A minister of the gospel told me, my wife's problem is her mother. Hey, hey, hey. The mother has always been with her. But I understand what he is saying. Anytime she calls home and they are talking and they are talking, problem begins. Didn't you see it before? You married a woman that, that did not have the maturity to follow you. Number two, we're talking about your desires. Verse five. See what the next thing is. 
And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto the land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? The woman must be willing to follow. Brothers, don't keep begging a lady to marry you. You are not that useless, are you? Why are you begging? Say, if you don't marry me, I'll kill myself. <laughs> Better start killing yourself. Start the process. Kill yourself now. You are not, you are not wise. I know a man that did the same thing. He, he tried. He was working with the notion that, you know, they say, try. If at first you don't get it, try, try, and try again. With the notion that women don't know what they want. You know, so what, with pressure and whatever, they finally, it happens in some places. I gave my wife some tests of followership. If she had failed it, she would have been my wife. Very clear, simple terms. And she followed me all through. To a point of even choice of where she will serve. I saw a woman that was mature. I told her, listen, I want you to serve in Enugu so you can work with my pastor. You see all those virtues and all those stuff? I want you as my wife to understand. That's wisdom talking. While we were dating, I told her the vision that God showed me concerning her. That's what we call being spiritual. You're not playing games here. You just married a woman. You don't have any clue who she is. When the Lord showed me, he told me not to talk to her for one year. Didn't I tell you guys? What was I doing for those one year? God wanted me to have an idea of the woman I was bringing in. So I will learn how to treat her right. You don't have a revelation of the woman that is coming. That's how you can treat her anyhow. Oh, I saw the army God was sending my way. And he told me ways to handle her. Ah, for one year. Visions and different. Names of her children. According to their sex. Uh, don't look at me as one special person. No. I'm serving a special God. Who is in the business of revealing mysteries. You walk with him, he will show you things. Say, I had not seen, nor ear heard. That I said, enter the heart of man. The things that God has what? But is, is you bringing out quality time to download from heaven what God is saying? I know the woman I married. I know, I know. The, we got to a point where I would be. I was preparing her for the ministry she's manifesting now. She went to her bar. I watched her from beginning to end. And I was proud of her again. And I said, Lord, this is an expression of what you showed me. How do we showcase her? What kind of platforms do we bring to her to make her fully step into that dimension? That's what marriage is all about. So it's a woman that is willing to follow you. A woman that believes enough in your future. She must have seen your future. Glimpse of your future. And she's willing to be part of it. That's the woman to go for. You should have a desire of a man that has a future... That resonates with your future that you have seen. I've always been dreaming of entering a vehicle to go to a bomb. And this man is on his way to an Anambra state. Why should we be found on the same vehicle? Enter into the vehicle with a man going to that Aquaibom. And go with a man where you land in Aquaibom. Understands a boom and can take you to the different wonderful places in a boom. Don't marry a stooge. All these things are very important. Because when 
two different visions, what we call division comes in, division comes in. A woman that is willing to follow you. Do you know in marriages, they got married, started a wonderful family, two years after, the woman just woke up and said, I want to go to UK. That's where I want to be. And the man said, no, 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 my dear, uh, my, my calling is Nigeria. Said, oh, no. Hmm. No, my calling is in UK. And he does everything. The woman gives him ultimatum. That trouble, no. It happens. And finally, the man just says, okay, you can go. Because he doesn't want problems again. And she goes. The man, for no reason, never knew that there would ever be a long-distance relationship in his marriage. And before you know it, one thing happens. Before you know it, They're separated. Divorced. What's that? Unwillingness to follow. Inability to see the dream. A glimpse of the dream. The man is carrying. The future he's carrying. With unwillingness to follow. At times, they lose sight of the dream of the man. And they begin to follow their own dreams and, you know, that's where they make a mess of the whole thing. So what will make a woman lose sight of the dream she once saw in you? You lost sight of the dream yourself. These things happen. Amen? These things happen. Okay, next, um, next point is this. In verse 10, let's go there fast. The moment they agreed in verse 10, and the servant took 10 camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Yes? Verse 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Mm -hmm. And he prayed. Okay. Why did this man carry 10 camels? I've shared with you guys. We're talking about having a desire, specific desires of what you want. What the man did was an expression of Abraham's desire. Abraham was a farmer, livestock keeper, cattle rearer. So the son also inherited the vocation of his dad. So the dad wanted a farmer's child, not the daughter of a blacksmith. They don't want anybody <laughs> shaping salt in the house. They want ones that can tend lives. That's the desire. That's why the man carried and he prayed a prayer. The woman, let's continue. That's the prayer. And he said, Oh Lord, God of my master Abraham, I pray thee. Send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Verse 13. See the prayer now. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughters of men of the city come out to draw water. Verse 14. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. So the proof that God has shown kindness to him was that the desire was granted. He said, I want a woman that I will ask. I'm thirsty. After giving me a pitch of water to drink, she will also quench the thirst of my animals. Why will she bother quenching the thirst of her animals? She loves animals. 
She's a farmer's girl. She won't be a stress to the family. You are bringing that woman. <laughs> Her entrance now disrupts the whole system. What is wrong with you? Look for people of kindred spirit. So he had a desire to look for a woman that loves the vocation of the son. So he will not end up changing his vocation. I've said it here before. Pastor, look for a pastor's wife material. Your ministry will keep standing, manifesting the glory of God. Don't go and get somebody. You are doing a great job and she goes into the congregation and she's causing havoc. People are leaving. You don't know why they're leaving. You are binding devils. Hey, check the devil is inside the house. There are many pastors that have gone through hell. So he wanted a farmer's child that can take care of both the man and the vocation. A woman that loves his calling and will pay any price to make that calling productive. That's the woman he wanted. Next verse shows the next desire. Ah, so many things here. Next verse is verse 14. So, a woman that loved the calling, in that same 14 we just read, a woman that would go the extra mile to do what? To take care of the camel. Do you know how many times Rebecca had to draw water from that well just to quench the test of the camel? We made a study and we found out how many liters of water quenches the test of a camel. And I was wowed. So what is that? One of the desires he had for that woman that was coming into this covenant with his son, one of the desires was a diligent woman. Another word for it is a virtuous woman. A virtuous woman. Because this thing called virtue is so powerful. While you are marrying, you should know that, you know, in as much as God has promised us long life, things can happen. That's where many men have left their wives, you know, and gone to be with the Lord and left them in a state where they are now a liability to the family. So family members are thinking of how they are going to start training the children and different kinds of things. And you know that thing comes with a lot of insults. Hmm? That's your wife. And she can't handle anything. The business you left behind, she can't. A camel drinks 200 liters. That's 53 gallons in three minutes. In three minutes. Rebecca suffered. <laughs> she paid the price to qualify to be the wife of a covenant keeper. This God do, you have to prove yourself to qualify into some things. Salvation is free. You know why? Somebody was proved and he qualified. He paid the price. Died. Proved his obedience to give it free of charge. There is nothing free in the kingdom of God. Nothing is free. If it's freely given to you, somebody paid the price for it. Am I communicating? You come around us, we do you, you are healed. Oh, thank God. Free. Uh, somebody paid to make it available. People don't understand that one. <laughs> if not, people will be getting healed in the hospital. But why do they get healed when they come around an anointed person? It's a price. Kingdom, remember. Anytime you think of kingdom, remember price. 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 There's a price for everything good. Nothing becomes just good. 
you pay the price to make it good so diligence is there a virtuous woman <laughs> and <clears throat> there's another one now that our people our generation this generation does not like hmm? verse 15 watch now and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold rebecca came out who was born to bethuel son of milka the wife of nahor abraham's brother with her pitcher upon her shoulder and in verse 16 and the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin a virgin people are laughing a virgin <laughs> neither had any man known her today we have experienced people they have broken the guinness book of record when it comes to sex and different kinds of carnal things a virgin and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up or that is asking for a virgin are you a virgin Virgin. <laughs> it talks about purity undefiled. Not corrupted. Incorruptible. Such people, when taught well, can make a wonderful home. Because even the sex he's having with you, the husband, it's new, so both of you are learning it together. You see thing, this thing called sex. Let me be honest with you. Just as people get afraid of sexually transmitted diseases, hmm? we call it STD. There is also STD. D with a difference. Sexually transmitted demons. You need to understand that. So if you have been exposed to all those things, you need to go for deliverance because there's something in you that is fighting your home without your knowing it. And your husband is wondering, why are you always angry with me? And you're always angry with him or not with any other guy. Is him. Because that spirit is jealous of him. He are coming to share the woman with the spirit so why won't he be angry with you <laughs> it's a spiritual thing it's a spiritual thing so i've shown you one diligence i'm showing you another one again pure woman pure character wise undefiled i'm showing you another one again they said that the damsel was very fair to look upon an attractive woman Go for the woman that attracts you. Don't, 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 don't just look at that woman because she's doing... Say, I want a woman that will be praying for me so that I can be prospering. Thank God for your life. <laughs> Thank God for your life. <laughs> the day she starts praying for you, well, I don't begin to... She must be attractive. So the day you quarrel, you, you want to come back. Am I communicating? Because she's attractive. You want to come back. And what makes a woman attractive? Let me list them for you, some of them. Her personality. Who is she? Is she kind? Her character. <clears throat> An elegant woman. Fashionable. Has a good dress sense. Smells good. Talks well. I saw a girl. Try. Fine girl. I came close. She opened her mouth. I was there. <laughs> because I'm not the type that I don't like hurting people. I would have done like this. How? <laughs> what is this? Did I meet a corpse or a living being? So I was doing like this. Yeah. Listen, if you are on a fast, stay in. That kind of a fast where you fast without any of these things. You're not taking your bath and all those stuff because you feel that God will respond faster. <laughs> Stay locked up in. If you have to come out, wash, perfume, spray yourself, you know, and come out. Be attractive. 
You won't tell women in marriage. Remain attractive. They say, ah, who am I attracting again? Hey, you need to keep attracting your husband, my friend. What's your problem? Stay attractive. Let the man see that thing he married. Let them see you. Let them see you. When a woman walks in, eyebrows should be raised. Who is that? Next to turn. Not you come in, we are looking straight. You come in, we are still looking straight. <laughs> To be fashionable, have a good dress sense. You know how to combine colors. That God loves rainbow should not mean you should have rainbow all around your thing. Eh? Know how to match the thing. A woman with a good dress sense is called an elegant woman. When you see elegance, you just want to. You're just smiling. At times you are, you don't even know what to even say. And, and she, she stops and she looks at you. Hey! You melt. There's something coming out of her. Elegance. Then she talks well. How are you? We are fine. <laughs> How many are you? And she's like. She, she now responds. Have, have you blind? Have you blind? What is your problem? <laughs> like a guy told me of a story of when they went for youth service and somebody was giving them uh, the camera to snap. I think it was even a lady said, He said, Cheese? Say cheese. He said, Cheese? Has it. <laughs> Has it. <laughs> Don't say have it. <laughs> Has it. <laughs> Go and groom yourself. Eh? If you cannot speak English, vow you will never speak it again. Speak, <laughs> speak your mother. <laughs> when the man comes, just tell the man, say, ah, me oh boy. <laughs> You speak your language. Stay on the one you are <laughs> eloquent in. <laughs> Amen. Don't fold your hand. Stay in your area. Amen. Amen. These things are very, very, very important. You know, if you want to learn how to speak English, speak it well. Hmm? Love it. Hallelujah. For a guy, <laughs> you see a young man with a future dressing like a student. Shirt. Trouser. You look at the trouser. Oh my God. There's a suit. They call it Obiluo. When you sit and you stand up, the suit will rise with you. Because even the hems, the hems are coming out. As you are standing, you don't need to learn Michael Jackson's dance. As you are standing, the suit is moving up. At least Michael will push it up. <laughs> eh? This one goes up naturally. I understand that poverty is real. But you are not the only victim. If it means three clothes, make sure they look good. See, how I know a man that believes in his future. He's dressed good. You see young men dressing anyhow. Shirts. Trouser. Slippers, bathroom slippers. Bible in the armpit. <laughs> hey sister, how are you? Bless you. Hey yeah. Uh, oh. Praise God. <laughs> Some sisters are suffering. I tell you. Nothing interesting about you. Dressing zero. Look for clothes. Hmm? 
that address where you are going to. When some brothers now pass by, you are looking behind them. Whether there was a he goat he brought along. <laughs> is there a he goat around? And you are wondering. All you are waiting for is for the sound. <laughs> of a he goat. Hey, what is that? Is he selling ogiri or what? <laughs> eh, ogiri ogbe. <okay. laughs> what is he selling? He just passes by your, your, your You just enter into breathing exercise. He's coming because you know him with that smell. So you hold your breath. So he can pass by. This is what, this is what some of you are doing to me. You're man of God. He's okay now. <laughs> so he can go. So you can breathe again. What is this now? At times you give them all those, you know, roll on and all those stuff. Their paradigm detests it. They leave it somewhere. At times they take offense. Because the environment is as pungent as that does being there. So they don't even know how they are smelling because they came from a place that, is, that smells like that. Shave. Use your roll on. You know, your boxer, okay? Your boxer, hmm? your boxer, one a day. You see, because the boxer is not seen. You see somebody wearing boxer for seven days. <laughs> eh? Even God did not walk that long. <laughs> he rested on the seventh day. You are carrying boxer for seven days. Haba. Hey. Stockings. Jesus. Jesus. And you are telling me that sisters are not following you. Why would they follow you? Who wants to go to a mug? Hey. Eh? What? Who died in your place? Black and black every time. Who died? That's how you start driving the car. Police officers will be quick to stop your car. And they are talking to you because they don't believe you are the owner of the car. We will seize it. Call your ogre. <laughs> the ogre. Shut up. You want to insult my profession? Don't you know? <laughs> Amen, no? Amen. Let's leave that. At least the word is enough for the wife, right? Um, why I exhausted this one? Ah. Verses 23 and 26. Let's go there fast. Are you there? And he said to the lady, whose daughter are thou? Are you seeing now? The lady has finished giving the camels the, the water, so he, he's satisfied and convinced that's the woman. So he wanted to do something else and said, whose daughter are thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? What is it testing? Hospitality. Hmm? He wants to know whether this family is like the family we came from. Watch now. 24. This thing called being stingy. Eh? <laughs> it will rob you of anything good. And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Mekah, which she bare unto now. She knew where she came from. Yes. She said, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge him. Eh? See what happened in 26. That was it for the man. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And see what he said. 
And he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who had not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I want you to underline those words because we're going to pray it eventually. He did not leave him destitute of what? His mercy and his truth. I being in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So he, he has led me to a house like our house. Can I prove that this is the kind of house that Abraham was a hospitable man? Notice what the woman said. He was asking for lodging. She, she decided to talk about even food. Was it? See the food she even talked about. Watch. Straw and provender. His food for the camels as well. So we're not even talking about you. We're talking about we're going to take care of you and everybody you are bringing in. That's generosity. That's a generous person. Amen. So if you look at Genesis 18, you will see what Abraham did. God came with his angels to visit Abraham. Abraham told them, he said, come in. He said, ah, just stop by and wash your feet with water. We're going to give you water. And then we're going to give you bread. Let's look at it. In Genesis 18, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamer, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Verse 2. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. See what he offered them. Verse 3. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass me not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Yes? Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Yes? And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come to your servant. And they said, So do as thou hast said. Okay. See what he did. Verse 6. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes upon the head. From bread cake. That's higher grade. Am I communicating? Not only that, but what he promised him was water and bread. Now he's bringing cake. What next? And Abraham ran onto the herd and fetched a calf tender and and gave it unto a young man and he hasted to dress it. So he's now bringing cakes obviously the water for them to wash their feet and all those stuff. He is now bringing suya. Hmm? Lamb, right? Meat. Hmm? Now watch. Next verse. And he took what? Butter. And milk. And a calf. Which he had dressed. And set it before them. That's the man. The hospitality par excellence. Going the extra mile. They went to their family people. The same thing. The same lifestyle. Family of generosity. When there is a need and you call for help, they are there. They help you without requiring payment because they are hospitable. Mm? Hallelujah. Okay, number what now? We've finished dealing with desire. I spent some time in desire because it's very important. Many people don't know how to desire things. So we just give you an idea of what to desire. Um, okay. Let's leave that because of time. Number what? Four. Be active in kingdom service. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and every other thing shall be what added unto you. So even you will receive help in choosing the right person. You know, so, so make sure that you are not just being active because you want to marry you are active because you love God. They will find you there. Boaz found roots in service. Rebecca was also found in service. Everyone you see, God's anointed servants speaked. That stood out. Usually, they were found in service. Even um, the wife of David eventually. Abigail. Serving, serving, serving. Okay. 
Number five, don't compromise your godly standards because you want to be accepted. You know, you've kept yourself, you've kept yourself, guys are insisting that, you know, you must sleep with them, blah, 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 and they're telling you, you see, you see that person, it's because he, he ate the soup and liked what he ate, that's why he married her. So, why would I come and not eat this soup and carry you and marry, you know, all those stories that are giving you jazz. Don't compromise your godly standards. Listen, there's one thing about God. He doesn't reward you because you did good. He rewards you because you are doing good. He gives seed to the sower, not to the man that sowed. To him that overcomes, there is a crown waiting for him. So overcomers are those that kept overcoming. You kept overcoming temptation. So that reward that God has designed for you comes to you when you don't compromise your godly standards. Am I communicating? Anybody can marry you. Eh? What we are talking about is not you marrying. It's you marrying the godly one that you will enjoy marital bliss with and fulfill God's purpose for bringing both of you together. That's why we're here. Amen? Amen. And that's the kind of life you should go for. So don't compromise your standard for anything. Don't want to be accepted on the basis of compromise of your standard. Be accepted for who you are. Be joyful. Another principle. Always have a smile on your face. Nobody marries a depressed woman. Oh, be excited. Be f- full of life. Their sisters, when, when I see them, they're looking like this. If nothing is wrong with you, hmm? and Reverend Dubus walks up to you and says, are you alright? He's telling you that your countenance is resisting relationships. And you don't know it. What, what's your problem? Looking morose every time. Who, who, who killed your father? You just come to a place. What is that? Who will come to you? Be approachable now. Smile. When an attractive woman has a smile on her face, oh my God. She opens the door for people to come. You know, there are times when a woman comes to a particular place, she doesn't want anybody to whatever. You know what she does? She bones up. But now, making that thing a lifestyle is making you lose opportunities. Every guy and girl in this house, hmm? smile. Your best you comes out when you smile. You know? You become promising. Amen? Every time you are looking as if not only the London Bridge fall, <laughs> Niger Bridge has collapsed. Eh? It doesn't make sense. Smile. It doesn't take anything from you. Rather, it adds to you. Amen? And finally, be led by the Spirit. That should be number what? Number seven. I love seven. Be led by the Spirit. God is a matchmaker. When you are sensitive to him, the Bible says he will guide you into all truth. When you are sensitive to God, God will guide you to the person he has designed for you. And when you see that person, if you are truly led by the Spirit, you will know when you meet the person. Because I found people, they are with their own Wives, husbands, still they don't know. They don't know. And they're busy misbehaving. After a while, the man just changes levels because she was blinded to that fact. Amen.